This is Real Talk with Joel, Gatlin, and Hayden on The Wire, OU Student Radio. Hey everybody out there, this is The Wire, your OU Student Radio Real Talk edition. Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? We got Hayden and Joel in the studio. So what's going on guys? Hola. What's up, what's up? Hola. How's, how's the world doing out there? It's a... Uh, it's, it's nice and hot for me. I don't know about uh, y'all. Well, have I mean, you, we had a little have Cordova. You see, have you seen this sunburn on my legs? I did see. Oh, oh yeah. I was gonna slap his. Y'all, I was gonna slap it earlier to see how much it hurt. But okay, for all the the listeners out there in radio world, imagine like as red as you can imagine on my knees, going back back five inches, and then probably the whitest thing you've ever seen. Um, that's why you don't go to a softball game and sit for five hours and not wear sunscreen. No, that's not smart. <laughs> uh, actually, at work a couple of weeks ago, um, one of the guys working camera was filling in for another guy who was not coming, and he got sunburned the whole game. And when, later on, when we went to do this trivia night, he showed up all red. <laughs> and then the guy who didn't show up for work came to the trivia night. And did, needless did, to did, say, did there was the some sun, bad blood. Did the sunburn guy get slapped? That's the real question. I was tempted to, but I was going to be nice. See, I always thought that was, like, the most ridiculous thing in the world. Like, somebody obviously is in pain, so you know what we're going to do? Slap him. We're going to slap, slap him. him. Yeah, exactly. it's the best way to test somebody. Yeah. Um, How I'm bad not, does this really hurt? Yeah. That that hurt. Can I test your... Oh! Oh, there oh, I was going to ask if I could test it, but Gatlin went ahead and did it. <laughs> There's, like, a You can't ask for permission, print. because then no, they're, they're no. going to be like... Uh, they're going to be expecting it, and you and can't, you can't be ask like... Permission to you can't You can't have... You can't be expecting it. That's not fun. Well, today we got a great show lined up, guys. Yeah, we do. I mean... Sports movies. Is that that is that is our highlight sh- of the show today. We are looking forward to t- get into that, talk about them. You know, we have our top five favorite sports movies. I already know. I think I know one of Joel's. I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna spoil it, Joel. But no, I'm pretty sure funny. we talked about it earlier. Yeah, I think we did. Definitely has one of the greatest themes to it. Yeah, themes of all time. Today. Well, I'm intrigued. Yeah. And then I know Hayden's been working hard on his top five list, which means he hasn't been working on. It. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I'm gonna I give Hayden I'm enough. I'm not gonna credit. lie. I've been driving around town thinking about my movies. I got it. Like, I am so ready for today. This last week and this week, I've circled on my calendar. I'm so ready. And then Hayden's ready. I'm just saying, sports movies is one of my, like, passions when it comes to film. Mm -hmm. And because it mixes my two of my favorite things. It combines sports and and movies. movies. Sweet. And it makes, and to me, it's, uh, we'll get further into it. If there was some way for the film to feed you while you watch it, my three favorite things. (laughs) Yeah, and I can kind of get that too when uh, Gatlin mentions his favorite movies. A lot of them are sports movies. So you can definitely tell that he gets a lot of, uh, he gets a lot of what he likes in movies and sports movies. Oh yeah, I, I mean, awesome. You know, you can you can never go wrong with really sports. Movies. Exactly, and then you know, I, I got a little bias. You know, I used to used to play a lot of sports, so I yeah. probably got a little bias in there. Right. And I know you're a huge Giants fan, so I know you 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 definitely love sports. Yeah, I love a and lot of different sports too, even the fake ones. And I know Hayden over here, one of the biggest. I won't say the university that he's a fan of because we're not allowed to talk about. It's obviously our, Oklahoma University. Come on, we're not allowed to talk about our the sisters. Is it the stepsister school? I'm, just, I'm, not, oh I'm, well. not, I'm not even listening. <laughs> I'm not going to touch on that. Anyway, right now at least we won't touch on that. But Hayden's a big sports guy too. You know, his girlfriend plays softball. You know, she's very athletic as well. So I mean, Hayden's definitely into it. But yeah, but yeah, there's something else today too. I know there's also got preview news. Yeah, we got a preview news. We got a lot to talk about as far as your average new, uh, movie news, and specifically, a certain trailer might be debuting pretty soon that we're all excited about. But we'll reach into that point later. But also, we got to talk box office. A lot of the, a lot of movies came out this weekend. A lot of other movies coming out this weekend. Of uh, I think Furious Seven is coming out. Yeah, Furious Seven is coming out this weekend. So it's going to be huge. Huge oh, yeah. at the box office. Yeah, that that definitely is going to be very big out there. Yeah, and uh, we also we we also got. I have I have a unfortunate announcement that um this will be my last radio show. That's why I kind of sound so sad right now. April Fools! Oh, I, it's I, April I, Fools! You, 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 you could have like, heard a pin drop. <laughs> it's April! It's April Fools! I'm kidding. Pretty sure I heard the mouse in the wall crawling, and when when you did that, and I was like, "What is like?" What, literally, what's going everyone on? out, everyone walking by our studio, like, stop walking because they heard me say that too. Because they're like, "Oh no, Joel, don't leave us! Don't leave us!" I'm like, "Don't <laughs> worry, it's April Fools! I'm so, not gonna leave anybody. I'm not going anywhere." Have you played any good April Fools jokes besides that today on anyone? No, but school likes to do that a lot to me. It Last does. School does play a lot of April Fool's jokes. I mean, it's Last like night I pulled one. You uh, you pulled a pre-April I, Fool's I pulled one? an 11 p.m. April, March 31st 
fooled. Premature. It was, you know, it was a little premature. dirty. I told somebody that, like, I was talking about financial stuff, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm so, it was a big bill that I'm, I'm, I'm paying, and I was like, man, you know, it's, it went up two grand. And and uh, everybody freaked out, and I let it sit. And that's the thing with April Fool's jokes. You gotta let them sit. You gotta let the, you know, you gotta let the mouse in the wall. Mm-hmm. You gotta let them sink in. You gotta let it sit in, and then you just you drop it. But exactly. Then I feel guilty. Like there's my guilty conscience dropping in there. So. Oh, who? Ca- oh, it's all right though. It's April Fool's. It's like that day that we're all like, you know, you allowed know, to have. Now that, yeah. little... now that I thought about it, now that I think about it, no one's got me today. Here, well, and, I guess Joel, but. And yeah. here's the thing, though. I mean, in college, for the last couple of years, April Fool's kind of dies off because i guess it's more of an it's gotten a little more of the internet kind of april fools where you like post something or you say something the online internet steals something else and, from us yet again. and then you april fools at that and where, the, whereas when i was in high school you know there was actually april fool well, jokes here's here's the deal joel like okay so facebook stole friendship from us yeah uh and now the internet is still in april fools from us you know yes pretty soon you, you can work online you can learn online. Yeah, Netflix. You can television. date online. You build friendships online. You watch can play, TV online. You watch TV. You play jokes. You can do radio online too. You can like do us everything here at the Wire online. Uh, you can listen to us online as well. At wire.ou.edu. <laughs> that's the one thing that's okay to do online is. Uh, not even message know, loved ones. You can't message loved ones online. No, write a letter. <laughs> write a, write letter. a letter. Keep it classy, people. Stay traditional. I, I guarantee you probably half our generation doesn't even know how to write a letter. I do. Because only in, in elementary school. Well, elementary school, like, I did a lot well, of Well, you know what else no one can do is tail time on a regular clock with hands. I could. I, 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 I mean, can do that I can, more? but I, I was always amazed growing up. I'd have friends come over, and they and would they go. Would they'd ask me what time it is. It's like... 15, 16 year old guys, and mm-hmm. I'm like, y'all, you know, I'm not that smart. Yo, I, yo, 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 yo. I it's, know, more, it's more of y'all. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, I know that it's 415, so, you know, I can read that clock. So, y'all, y'all, y'all. See, that's, that's the thing, though, along with movies, too, I feel like we can watch them all online. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people aren't there getting you the you know the box office the feel the theater there, feel. There is something unless they're really that. rich and make their home a home theater, which is not. But if, if they're often. really rich, <laughs> they don't need to be pirating movies. You know. Yeah, obviously. exactly. <laughs> oh, but I, that's what I mean, like Netflix. Exactly. Or whatever, it's like yeah. joyriding. You do you pirate for the thrill of it. Not I don't pirate. <laughs> I don't pirate. But if I did, it would just be for the. So thrill many of people it. go in the works of like trying to pirate movies, and it's so much harder than in fact watching the movies. Here's a question. Definitely here's, don't encourage pirating. Here's a question when it comes to, to films. Like last night, I, I uploaded the video to YouTube, and on my monitor it was great. On everything it was great. But then when you it uploads to YouTube, it looks terrible. It's terrible. It looks it's still processing. Exactly. Well, it, it, it looks. It just looks bad. And I think you get a little bit of that with with movies too online. Yeah. There's something that's taken away from the art form of it by watching it online. Oh, I agree. Yeah, it started with the uh, digital convergence with uh, film. I'm Thanks, kidding. George Lucas. Yeah. Yeah, think. Star Thanks. Wars Episodes 2. Thanks, no, George. Episode 1 ruined it for everybody. Well, I'm saying Episode 2, though, was the first film shot it was all like, digital. It was like one yeah, scene. True. There was like one scene without a green screen. I'm just like, really? You're that lazy. <laughs> I don't think he's lazy. I think it's just he was so he was, he was so just so into the whole into digital, the whole digital yeah. thing, and no one had really done it yet. Well, and now, and now everyone's just kind of not sick of it, but they just want to see a little better creativity out of it. Well, mm-hmm. and here's the thing with the with the early Star Wars film, like Episode, you know, four was absolutely groundbreaking oh, because fantastic. because Lucas took that risk and wanted to be groundbreaking. Yeah. And I feel like he thought, okay, this is where it's all going. Yeah. Now I got. I mean, he, it could have worked, but the story just didn't match. It looked it. fantastic though, the Episode four, like how green. Grainy, grainy it looks, how real everything feels, like well, the costumes. And I'll be real, I, I, l- I think episode three looks really good in terms of the, the graphics. Like oh, episode yeah, the, one I, was a little too early. Episode three was horrible. I mean, storyline One definitely. scene, One scene ruined it for me, though. It was the uh, Gre- General Grievous lightsaber fight. That was really bad. Because oh, he was like, because Obi-Wan was standing like right in front of him, and he was like, shoo, pulls out four lightsabers, and Obi-Wan doesn't even move. And That's- Obi-Wan... I'm and that, did, and that deflates yeah, everything. It, and that deflates everything. <laughs> but the good guys won. Well, all, that's, that, I mean, again, win. that's why Obi Wan didn't do anything. I mean, that's brilliant script writing. George Lucas knew. Obi Wan knows he's the baddest guy around. That guy pulls out four light. He can pull out ten lightsabers, and he's like, ah, oh, no big deal. Ten lightsabers. He can pull yeah. up well, fifteen especially. lightsabers. Well, the only thing, the only person, like y- y- y'all know, Kenobi knows he's not better than Yoda. <laughs> Kenobi. Yeah, Obi Obi Wan's his first. Kenobi, man. you mean? 
I said Kenobi. I think you said Kenobi. No. We did just Uh-oh. eat some We Kenobi. ate some Kenobi. 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 It was, yeah. I didn't, though, but you know, it was still pretty You good. were there for the, uh, the I atmosphere. was there in spirit, and I was there for, you know. The, there in feel. <laughs> there, in, there in a atmosphere. What, was, what, in were the, what were the other two words that we we really liked last week? Guys, hold on. The Time voice. Out. Time out. I just got a text message. I, okay, so I, I texted a friend, and I asked him, I need some sports movies, and I think I'm going to have to switch my list up. Oh, wow. you, mean, you mean your brother? I did text him. <laughs> it, 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 well, it is, and he sent me oh, I was right. one, two, three, four, five films, six films. That, that you didn't I, have? That I, none of these, well, one of them's on my, two of them are on my list, but the list is probably going to get they've shaken been, up a little bit. They've, in, they've invented this thing a while back called uh, Google. Oh yeah, that's, that's oh, see, the, again the <laughs> internet. I don't. There, there it is again. It's still you can't even make Hayden, a list anymore. You know, Hayden. old top five movies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up online, and the top five that's gonna tell me. Hayden's such a traditional. Bill, you know, whatever Al Gore is gonna tell me what the top five favorite movies no, are. No, I'm just saying. I go there and I was like, name me, give me a hundred movies or films, but I, sports films. But I didn't need it because this is like you know my passion. Sports films, but that like you last for me, week animated. We yeah. had to do. I mean, I went and like even, top one hundred yeah. animated movies. Yeah, I did, I did even for me, when I went to look up sports movies, there's some sports movies I would have missed if I didn't look them up. But see, that's the beauty of it. That is the it's beauty organic. of it. It's organic, and that that's what allows us. Like you'll bring up a movie that I totally don't have. Yeah, I'll bring a movie that Hayden and, and the internet will bring us. <laughs> I'm kidding. Again, we have we have our new co-host, the internet. I mean, you, you guys have heard about this. The whole United States is becoming more Midwestern. That's what everybody says because everybody is becoming like everybody else. You can't even pick a top five favorite movie list and not Without be informed been. by the internet. You know, this this I'll give you right now. This one today is genuinely. Gatlin Didier's top five hey, without any oh, influence. I, I, I have no doubt. You guys, I trust you guys implicitly, but I'm just saying, people eat organic, let's think organic. Organic. Well, when we get back, we're going to get into movie news. So Joel will be leading us in that, and we will be bringing up some Transformer news, some Tron. Oh, wait, yeah. And then possibly, we've already touched a little bit on it, some wars. Don't, don't be any frozen, but... Um, There'll be some wars, and we definitely won't be you know, giving any false information. There'll week. be Air Bud information. Though. Hey, you know what? Shout out to Air Bud. Sports movies, Air Bud, you know, that's definitely in my top Get out of here. 25 Air Bud's not in my top. Movies. Air, Air Bud's not in my top, but I, said top 25 I want to give basketball. Air Bud a shout out. It was fantastic <laughs> as a kid. I cried. I'm going to move on to our first piece of news, and that one is Transformers. Apparently, according to rumors all from Screen Rant, accordingly... To screen rant, they will be getting a cinematic universe, including spinoffs and sequels. <sighs> How do you guys feel about that? Do I, do I need to even say anything? I mean, like the first three weren't bad enough. Like this is this is like a bad decision that keeps getting worse. You first know what I'm four. saying? Like this is like those commercials where you know don't get, you know, you you go to play ping pong and you meet a guy who has a peg leg and you know then you end up in a ditch. You know, don't go play ping pong. Switch At the least cable. you tried. <laughs> Gatlin? That's this movie. I'm uh, I'm I'm right there with Hayden. I am a little burned out on little Transformers, which uh, we talked about last week. You know, we may get burned out on these superhero movies, and I'm already slowly getting there. I'm getting there right now with these Transformer movies, and I honestly thought they should have stopped after probably two. Uh, they probably should have just stopped after one, honestly, but they they should have stopped after two. They made the third one. I was like, okay. Done too far. Then here comes a fourth one. Money, 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 money. I went and watched it. I was like, you know what? A lot of people won't agree with me. I liked it better than I liked the third one, but still should not have been made. Guys, just, I want quality. Who cares about quantity? I know wait, they want. Yeah. Wait, you're telling me there's money. four Transformers? Yes. Yeah. No, the I thought there was The last one was Mark Wahlberg. <sighs> Age of Extinction. All right. I want to be a little honest. I actually want to see more Transformers, but obviously not the ones we've seen in the past. I want to see something else, which means... Let's get away from Earth. I don't care about our little planet with robots in it. I want them to go to Cybertron. I want them to fight it out there. Like a kind of a prequel type of thing. And say, what Cybertron's happened, gone, isn't of, it? Yeah, of what happened on Cybertron. I want to see that on my screen. And this is the best thing for Michael Bay because Michael Bay can go off as his imagination goes because it's a... It's a... It's not a, It's not Earth. You know, you really can't film it. You have to film that in like a... In a in a graphic like in graphic well, environment that's, that's what I was with CGI, ask, is, was it just going to be an animated like a, C, a completely CGI film? Which I wouldn't mind. I that, wouldn't mind. Would that be the first of its kind? I, I mean, wouldn't. I wouldn't mind it at all. Like like it's not it's not an animated film. It's just all CGI. It's I a, I wouldn't mind it a, a, that much actually. It's a tranimated film. Oh. And it, and I just I think that <laughs> although for days. although Michael Bay's um, loves his special effects. 
they actually are pretty decent looking. The oh, special they're effects excellent. And, fa- and Transformers are pretty good, except for the last one. The last one is just weird and like air, like weird because like Galvatron was like moving around in like s- little sphere things. Now, did, did he direct? And it looked look so fake. Did he direct that battleship? He directed he, he battleship. He directed the uh, Armageddon. Pain and gain. Yeah, pain and gain. But you know we won't really talk about that one either. Yeah, uh, but I think he also did. did he I, do Battle Los Angeles. Is that him? No, I don't okay, think I don't so, think. No. Okay, but I think. I think what Michael Bay needs to do is like put it into another director's hands, and see what he does, because it's gonna make money. Either way, even if he, if he's just producing it, it says produced by Michael Bay. It's still gonna make money, like the first Transformers did. It was said produced by Steven Spielberg. That's what initially caught people in, like me. I'm like, I didn't watch any Michael Bay at that time, so I was like, hey, Steven Spielberg's producing it, and the first one's actually okay. I actually liked it a, a little bit. Um, was it perfect? No. Uh, second one, trash. Third one, trash. Fourth one, blech. You know, I'm just ready to see you something know, else. Here's my question: What's the difference between trash and blech? Like in your, I, I know there's a difference because I know you got a very analytical mind. I just want to hear that, the thought process. That goes into a trash can, so it's <laughs> all, it's almost as bad as trash, but it's on its way, but it's not really there yet. <laughs> so it means so like it's half, it's all, it's like in that middle line between bad and trash. You know how you know how they you know how they uh, classify Michael Bay films, right? No. It's, so if you ever seen a movie. Yes. It has a big explosion in it. It was probably a Michael Bay film. Or um, like low shots of girls in bikinis or it was short jean tank shorts. Tops short, short jean shorts. Short jean shorts. Nice yeah. little tan and boots on. Exactly. He probably did the Dukes of Hazard. We're not for sure. I doubt he did, but yeah. I know he didn't. But, but let's move on, guys, to more movie news. Let's not What's talk, next? Let's not talk more Transformers. Let's talk something a little uh, more encouraging, Tron 3. Apparently, it might have its uh, movie name, Ascension. How do you guys feel about the name, Ascension? We go from Tron, Tron Legacy, to Tron Ascension. I think it's appropriate. I feel like it, the the word carries a meaning. I guess would be like I don't know what the traditional uh, traditional uh, dictionary meaning of uh, Ascension is, though. I do think that it's a good fresh start. Obviously, you know, Tron Legacy was okay. I didn't enjoy it that much. There was some nostalgia. Some of that was in nostalgia for the people who watched the original uh, Tron. I'm just hoping that they don't focus too much on the spectacle of it, but more on the story of it. Because I feel like there is a potential story and Tron Legacy just wasn't explored as much as I wanted it to. But what do you guys think? You know, I, I actually, I, I didn't dislike Tron Legacy. I, I've never seen the original Tron, so... <clears throat> no. It's, I, it's, you can't watch it now. I feel like you can't watch it now without going, without cringing a bit at the effects of it. Because it was the first film to use special, like CGI, right? I don't, like, I don't think it was the first, but it's one of the. Pioneers. It's the one. It was. I think it was the first one to use it in a form where it was the, pretty much the entire the film, besides the besides the very beginning of it. Because yeah. the original one, they started off in a computer, like a place. That's and, that, and that's what I think the the kind of the problem with the storyline is with Tron. Like back in the the eighties, you know, computers were like this new kind of scary thing. Like it had a lot of potential, but it also had a lot of power, and people yeah. saw it as dangerous. Right. And now everybody's like, okay, they're stuck inside of a computer. You know, they think there's kids shows like that. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I, th- I I think that's that's the potential problem with you know with the storyline, but. Yeah, I'd like to see what they what they do with it. Here, here's the definition for ascension. Okay. The act sure. of rising to an important position or a higher level. So I'm going to guess somewhere in that story that uh, Garrett Hedlund's character, I can't remember his name, somehow either rises to the you know a higher position in the Tron. Maybe Jeff Daniels' character does. Maybe he takes over again. Maybe he takes over the, the Jeff whole... Bridges. Yeah, yeah, Je- Je- I, I do Jack Daniels. Every time. Daniels. I love it. Jack Why do Daniels. I do? I, hey, Jeff Daniels. Now we got Jack, Jack Daniels, Jeff Daniels, I love Jeff, Jeff Bridges, Bridges, and I, I keep doing that to no, him. I, I think I don't no, know why Jeff I Daniels would be a great cast for Jeff this. Jeff Daniels. <laughs> I mean, if we need a com- comic relief, Jeff well, Daniels. I think if guy. they just have him grow a beard, I think he would look a lot like Jeff Bridges at this point. And uh, they're brothers. Well, they got they got to make it a little more great because he's still got some color in his okay, hair. Okay, do you know what movie Jeff Daniels in is that I, that I really like? Dumb and Dumber. I'm kidding. Arachnophobia. <laughs> Get Gettysburg. Oh yeah, it's a really good movie. Joshua oh. Lawrence Chamberlain. He does. I think he does a great, great job. He actually looks a lot like the character, like historic guy. Anyway, total side note. But we I might, like we Jeff might touch on some historical movies. We might go on that. Heck yeah, That's in the, that'll be in the future. Probably. We got some history buffs over some, here. Some biopics. Could we do next week? Could we do biopics? <laughs> next week we're doing something else. But That's fine. we'll add that to our list. So let's go ahead and move on to our questions. Um, Mulan. Mulan's getting a live action supposedly, according to Cinema Blend, Look, getting a live action again. movie. This, and this is another Disney movie getting a live action adaptation. Money, so money, money, money. It's money. 
But I do think that Disney, I do think that Disney is getting better with these live action things. They're added. They're be, they're treating them more as, uh, mm-hmm. as their own type of di- their own thing instead of the animation. But isn't this like, interesting though? That back in the day, like when animation was first a, a thing, yeah, you, you saw people were copying historic fairy tales into mm-hmm. animation. Yeah. But now for our generation, these these animated movies are the fairy tales and now they're being made into live action movies. I, I think th- that's so interesting. I'm okay with them doing older Disney movies, but Mulan's so recent. It's yeah, so like recent. 90, it's 98. 90, 90, like yeah. 98 was like I can't around the same that. time as Hercules. They're not even doing Aladdin or Beauty and the Beast. Oh, they are doing a Beauty and the Beast one too. Which but, has been adapted before which too. Is, and I have, I have no problem with those as long because those have been adapted from other things. You know, like those movies weren't original. Mm-hmm. They came from books. They came from stories told uh, at spans of generations. And Mulan's the same thing. But I just feel like Mulan's story, I mean, we can wait it out a little bit. I mean, Mulan? I mean, Aladdin? Why don't we get Aladdin first or... Uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I would go watch that. We, we did. did. It, 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 Snow White and the Huntsman. Huntsman. That was horrible. Though. Oh, I didn't like was it. that Disney who did that? No, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't Disney. I though. think it was, was it? Fox or uh, gotcha. 20th Century Fox. It was 20th Century Fox. Yeah, I just. That's why they had to rename a the lot. The Huntsman. Of, and the Huntsman. Yeah. I will say this: if they're going to remake these fairy tales, like the reason I feel like the reason they're doing it is because people have seen these movies and they go they've seen all the Disney films and they go and it's totally different because they're basing it off I guess the Brothers Grimm a lot of their stuff and mm-hmm. it's it's bringing back some people who watch them who watch those animated movies as kids or younger people well, my thing is I think they should that's stick that's why they're making money if they're gonna make these films stick with the original storyline don't oh, mess it up but uh, yeah, maybe but, but my, my, my problem is is that like you said it's so recent yeah I know how Mulan ends you know and I haven't even seen it that many well, times. Well, we all know how Cinderella ends. Well, that's, but that's what I'm saying. Like, How does it end, Joel? I can't remember. I'm, I'm not spoiling <laughs> movies. I'm not spoiling. I haven't seen the recent uh, Cinderella either, which I hear is good. So oh, yeah, that, that maybe is. there's hope. Maybe there, I mean, there, I think there is hope. I mean, I'm not saying that maybe. There is some hope. Wh- where are you going? Good, You're about to go somewhere before I, I, I go, got you as my fault. No, no, no. I was just saying, I, I feel like these old films – They've become kind of like a, a historical canon for these for these new films, mm, yeah. and so they don't need to go off a different direction. They either need to stick with the original storyline, or if it's too recent, like Joel said, it yeah. doesn't need to be made. Well, like was Disney did that Mirror Mirror movie? Uh, oh, there, no, that wasn't a Disney one. Oh, wait, there was. Th- they I, were, I thought it was Disney. I don't know. I, th- sure I think it was, I think because they were also competing with Snow White's and the Huntsman. Yeah, those two movies came out the same year, and they that storyline was. It was cheesy. It was like yeah. the cheesier side of it. And I think Disney saw that. And then when they saw that, if Disney made it, I'm not saying Disney made it because I don't know. But if Disney made it, they probably saw that and they saw Hold So Much in the Huntsman. They're like, all right, maybe we can go a little more extreme with it. What I did not like, and I'll be real honest, was Maleficent. Because I feel like what it did was, is like back in the day, you know, when, when Sleeping Beauty came out, there was like, she was evil. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I think it's, it kind of shows our culture as a Humanized whole. Humanized her. And exactly. Now, but now she's like this bad character who's not bad but she's kind of anti-hero good. i think it's kind of a symptom of our of our society and I don't, i'm not trying to go all deep here well, but like yeah. it's so weird that she was the villain and like the epitome of evil her name is maleficent i mean mm-hmm. that's like exactly it, it means evil and now it's like she's this kind of awkward good slash bad i think it says a lot about the movies that are being made nowadays well how we're adapting them i'm exactly. just um i did i love the original sleeping beauty oh, Mal- absolutely. maleficent's performance especially the voice actress in there oh she was so evil and just like her voice is something that carries over and she's proud of it she was proud of it i know she's not you know alive anymore but i know she was proud of it kind of like the evil witch of the west you know um, she loved being the bad person you know she loved being evil because it's it's a fun and interesting way to see it but with angelina jolie i really wish that they stuck to her being completely evil but let's move on guys we can talk about another day we got a lot of other news to talk about hugh jackman Apparently, it's going to be done with X-Men movies after Wolverine 3. Really. It's after heard, X-Men Days of Future, not X-Men Apocalypse. I heard that a while back, and I heard that like he's actually X-Men been Roman. contemplating this for for a while. Yeah. And that, uh, especially after the last Wolverine, he said, I'll make one more Wolverine movie. Right. And then all the X-Men that are coming before or after, like all the ones before that Wolverine movie, I'll play Wolverine in. But afterwards, I'm done. Yeah. And to me... I mean, Hugh Jackman's been Wolverine in my eyes since 2000 when they made the first X-Men. Yep. And I and I and I really can't think. I remember the cartoons. I used to watch them, 
And I used to think, oh, like Wolverine. I had that image of him in my head. And now this is the image I have of Wolverine. He, in my, fits, yeah. he fits the he, character. I mean, he is Wolverine. I mean, yeah. you can watch almost any of his movies, and he's somewhat bringing that character to Into his other movies, characters. Yeah. And I watched a movie with him recently. He was in, he was kind of a comedic relief, a little short bit. And he goes, Wolverine, like, fakes out, like, you know, he got, like, he turns into Wolverine, yeah. and then he's like, that's who I play. He's so proud of being Wolverine, too. He he's should, so though, happy. He's, he embraces it so much. He loves being Wolverine. He loves being uh, the live-action version of well, what these character the people he's love. Just, he's a great actor in general. Like, yeah. he's so multifaceted. Like, if, if you look at Lay Miz, I mean, he was in o- the Oklahoma play because he didn't That's become, what got his career started. Exactly. Yeah. He didn't even become big until he was, like, you know, in his... What, early, late, late 20s, got, yeah, early, late 30s. 20s, early 30s. He's got such a wonderful range, too. I mean, when he's on screen as Wolverine, he's funny, but he's intimidating at the same time. And you didn't. And the thing is, you can't. I mean, I That's know, Wolverine. I never ever... This is how good he is. I never would have ever thought he was Australian. If anything, I would have thought he was British. Exactly. In some of his roles. I never would have thought he was Australian. And then you find that out, and you see how... That, I saw his background, where he came from, how he'd done everything. It is He has a neat story, so... They could look that up and see where, you know... And I think he's been married for, like, 35 years. To the same actress that he met on his first soap opera. Isn't that, I mean... And I'm not going to tell you right now, you know, you've seen how he looks. He has the, the Wolverine physique. He's 50 years old. Yeah. And, you know, he still has it. That I mean, age wasn't as well to his wife as it has she been to him. Her. His wife's and, proud. <laughs> oh, she's proud. And people always, like, judge him for that. But I, to me, that's really neat to see an actor stick with the same lady he's loved, they truly loves, instead of, you know... Falling for the the next big the conformist ideas girl. like oh well you know my my wife's kind of getting uh, uh, old so let's go on to one of these young starlets. I, I like I just like Hugh Jackman all the way around. Late Miz, talk yeah, about a performance. Excellent. And I and I think uh, Hugh Jackman wants to go into more roles like that. But I think as X Men is taking off as as a cinematic universe, kind of like the Avengers are, he's leaving it to new hands. He's leaving it to exactly. New people. And I think you know it's cool to see that he's paint you know. Um, it's interesting, you know, he's paying the bills with Wolverine, but then I think, I, but like you said, I think he enjoys making the Wolverine films, but I yeah. think his true passion is in stuff like Les Mis, because he was a theater guy at heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could love doing a, a, being a superior your whole life, and it's fantastic, <laughs> but at one point you're like, I think it's time to hand the keys off, I think it's time to hang it up. Because he is getting old. He doesn't look that way though. He still uh, he has these. He has I, the, hope, I hope I look that good. At he 50. has that reverse age syndrome good. like a lot of other celebrities did, have. Did y'all hear how he got so like crazy looking in, in Les Mis for that first scene? I don't know. He didn't. He didn't drink water for like uh, a day, like a whole day. Like he had medical supervision, but like he had no water, and so he had already lost Can't all imagine. this weight, and so to get his skin to look that loose. He didn't drink water for a whole day. I can't imagine. So he's singing, that. he's doing all that stuff, and he hasn't had any he's water. He's singing without he water. Dehydrate. Talk can, about yeah. method acting. You need I mean. water for some acting and singing, absolutely. But um, let's move on. <laughs> Hugh Jackman, though, fantastic. Like we all, he's we all agree. Man. He's the man. He's one of the he's one of the best actors out there. And forty seven. W- wish him nothing but the best of luck in the future X Men movies. He's still got two more movies, guys. So no, hey, you not know time what? to say goodbye yet. He's not right into the sunset Save for a him while. As you can. Exactly. All right, from one uh, action star to another, we go to Vin Diesel, who says Furious 7 might be the spark of a new trilogy amongst the Fast and Furious franchise. What do you guys think? <sighs> guys, <laughs> we've already touched on this with the Transformers. <laughs> you overfeed me. I'm getting bloated. I don't need this. I don't need more. Uh, I, guys, I know it's all about money. I know Hollywood. It's all about the money. You know, these Furious movies, they're making, you know, they're just different storyline and everything. You can only go so far with a storyline. To me, if it was never intended to be what, like, you know, like a Star Wars or a Star Trek, like a series where you can continue to go on with the storyline, why are they still doing it? I, I will say this. I, to me, there are films that can have unending sequels, and there are films that need to stop. Like, there are series that need to stop. Like, TV show, for example, Foils War on Netflix, if nobody's watched Breaking it. Breaking Bad. Yeah, exactly. Finale. Exactly. It there was are, a finale. That's the thing. Shows need to know when to end. Some shows, they end, and then they come back, and it's just it never is the same because the storyline arcs. It completes. There's resolution. But there are some movies that, like the Fast and Furious films, I've never seen them, so I can't come. I'll let you guys talk about this. But yeah. I feel like they're more like cinematic candy. And the way I see it is Fast uh, Fast and Furious 4, 5, and 6 kind of are a separate trilogy, especially from the original three, excluding, I don't know, Tokyo Drift would count as a third one since it's different continuity. But I don't know. I, I, I actually don't mind because, like I said, I haven't seen all of them. 
you know, would I like to see more? Sure, but I need to watch one first. <laughs> but the only thing is that uh, as long as the movies are good, keep making them. If people if people get sick of them, you'll stop making them. But until people get sick of them, we'll keep throwing them. But they're ma- they're making them just to make them for money. Then they're not really care. To me, they're taken away from why like what we've talked about on here. Yeah. The actual true the reason we're doing it because they can't come up with anything. I think yeah, but I think their stories are getting better though. Fast, the Fury, Fast and Furious franchise, their stories are getting better, which means they're adding substance to their things. Like I used to always say, quality over quantity, but they're adding quality to their quantity. Well, That's what I'm thinking. Can I just say this? I'm looking at our news right now that we've covered so far. We've covered Transformers, sequel. Tron, sequel. Mulan, adaptation of a film that was made like 10 years ago. Right. Wolverine, Wolverine sequel. And then now we're at another sequel. And then our last film that we're going to talk about is a sequel as well. I mean, I think that's, that's what it's on. come it's to. It's the hype crazy, machine. Yeah. I mean, and again, I get that it's news, and sometimes, you know... It you can't just, always pick the news. No, well, exactly. Yeah. And some, no, definitely, and it's the sequels that make the news. Yeah. But, I mean, we're making... They're and making and, and I'm looking, doing. and I am looking hard for a lot of original movies that are getting some there's nothing, attention, I mean, but there's, it's hard. It's, it's really hard. hard because you don't really see that until it comes out. When it comes out and starts to impress people, that's whenever it gets hyped. Like, last year, whenever Guardians of the Galaxy came out, I bet not a lot of people were reporting about the stuff going on in it until it started getting catching unintended fire you know and still so started catching fire and then people got interested in it and now everyone's like oh what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next you know and now everyone's excited it's all hype train really and and you know it's a good and it's a bad thing but we go from one sequel to the next <laughs> but this sequel is Isn't that how it works but this sequel is a little different than the other ones it's a sequel that's been decades in the making and obviously we're all excited for it we were not gonna nerd out right now Golf clap. Yeah, we nerded out last week. We yeah. nerded out plenty of totally times. Nerded out. I'm and I feel lie. like what we can do is just nerd it out all in one episode later this year, whenever <laughs> the the mo- actual movie comes out. And I think a lot of people can under can guess what movie we're talking about, and that's Star Wars Episode Seven. Oh, I thought we were still talking about tra- or, uh, uh, Fast and Furious. You thought it was Star Trek, right? I well, no, I thought we were talking about Transformers. <laughs> I thought we were talking I about, we about we Hunger Games. I was talking about the Hunger Games. I'm no, Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars, guys. Late but, reaction from Hayden. Yeah, oh, <laughs> but yeah, apparently the next, tra- the full first full trailer, will be premiering, um, with the Age of Ultron. But my theory is that there's a Star Wars celebration weeks prior to that premiere, and rumor has it, rumor, rumor has it that there might be. Uh, a little sneak peek to that trailer for those fans at Disney Celebration or Star Wars Celebration or, yeah, for those people Here, watching. Here's my problem. I don't know why they have to taint that movie by showing it with Age of Ultron. Oh, that's Hayden. all I'm saying. And hey, now Hayden has to go watch Age of Ultron yeah, just to watch saying. the now trailer. I gotta go watch and not it. only do you have to go watch it, you have to go watch an IMAX 3D if you want the full experience of that trailer. <laughs> <laughs> See, again, I'm not going to – never mind. No, I'm, I'm – I was talking about I, our culture. I think I but think I'm we're done. all I think we're all pretty much excited for the next Star Wars. I sure am. These guys sure are. I, and I'm I am excited for Age of Ultron. I'm sure Galen is. Hayden, not so much. But there, it's cat. You know, it's it's coming closer and closer. I mean, we're only a good eight months away. <laughs> I feel like honestly, I'm so happy that we talk about this every show because it's. it's <laughs> I don't make this stuff up I, either. I know There's about, always something to report on. I know about 3:40 on a Wednesday. Except for Frozen 2. Uh, there we go. I, <laughs> I know about 3:40 on a Wednesday. My my week is gonna get better. In this segment, we are gonna be talking box office, and uh, we're Ready? gonna mix it up a little bit today. And uh, Gatlin, I think instead of just reading them to you, I'm gonna see if you can list. Our box office. Okay. It's going to be hard this week. I mean, this is not going to be easy. I'm doing a little quiz here. I mean, I obviously made the list and got them offline, so online, so I can't. Joel is DQ'd from It'll this It'll be one. cheating. I have been studying, guys, my uh, my finances, and I've seen how the market is working, are so you, just bring them. Are you also oh, a business minor? <laughs> yes, I am a business minor minor. Okay, here, here's here's what we'll do. You, we'll have you list them. I'm going to give them to you in no particular order. Okay. order. Have yeah. you list them, and then when you list them, Give how much money you thought they earned. Oh, okay. Good luck. I can do that. Okay, here we go. Okay. So, no particular order. Insurgent, It Follows, Get Hard, Cinderella, and Home. Ooh, <laughs> those are hard. <laughs> now, like, th- this is the hardest <laughs> You need a pen to write them down? Yeah, here, here, Gatlin. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll give them to you one more time. Okay, okay so, so. Write them down, yeah. Okay, so, so Get it, Hard, Insurgents. Cinderella. Cinderella. Home. And it follows. 
Okay, first you, off, what is it? It follows. It's I, a. It's a. Yeah, is no it the idea. one I talked about? These are all from Rotten Tomatoes, and this one is a horror movie that is based off a. Yep, I saw that. I yeah, about it. there you go. <laughs> it's just a horror movie. Okay, okay so well, walk us that, through your thought process. It, it follows here. is gonna be fifth. Ding ding ding! We have a winner. Wait wait wait! wait. How much? You want to? Yeah, you want to branch out? Mm. Here? You want to guess? Go I'm on a limb. Say, was, was it single digits? Can I get single, single digits? digits. Five point nine million. Oh, that's too high. Three point eight. Oh, oh man. man, so close. Oh well. All right. Who do you think is number four? Hmm. When did uh Home come out? That came out this weekend. I think too? it came out this weekend. Insurgents came out this yes. weekend. Yeah. Get Hard was fourth. Ah. Oh, wow. Right. That's a was good guess. Home? though. At number four, if Cinderella. Oh, because it came out two weeks ago. How much do you think it made? Guess on the money here. Mm, 11.6. Ooh, low, low. We got 17 million for Cinderella. Hey, I was under, though. Hey, no, that's good. Yeah, you're under. It's better to go under. Okay, so that that leaves me with. You're just underestimating the. You're just underestimating its fan base. I think last week I said, get hard. I said, for sure, we'll make 50, not in its first week, but 50 overall. And then I'm going to say... So number three. Number three is going to have to be Get Hard. So, eh. and, uh, you're close, though. See, close. I was right, and I should have went with it. I was right. All right. Okay, Insurgents. Insurgent. How much do you think it made? Uh, 29. 21.5. A little, uh, closer. A little so over. Close. A little closer, yeah. Okay, and then, so next, I'm going to go... Dude, I, I told y'all, I knew Home was going to do well because of Jim Parsons. Jim Parsons. And, it, and it's family. I mean, and it's, it's, a fan, and it's taking over that to. cartoon thing. Yeah. Get Hard was sec- oh, second. Yes. You're right. Ding, ding. How much do you think it made? 34. Close. 33.8. Oh, give oh, it to him. Okay, you, got you gotta the give ra- me that. You got the rounded. <laughs> hey, I, I told you. Uh, you see, this week, though, you will see it fall. You will see it only make 16 at the most. And that's because of Fast. I mean, Fury. Well, you seven. have so many movies coming out, and plus those comedies, every second week after they do so well... All right. Obviously, home was first. I'm gonna guess that it made in the 50s. It did. 52.1. Boom. Nice. It's not bad. I mean, that was this was probably the most ridiculously hard week. Well, when you read those this names, this was a tough week. I mean, read, you read those 50, names. 50 million for an anime movie on I'm first impressed. week. That's crazy. I'm impressed. Well, I saw the commercial and I didn't think it looked good at all. Uh, but I'm, yeah, let's go ahead and talk some of these numbers that we have. Yeah, I mean, okay. So here we go. We got we got home at at 50, one at one with 52 million. I I mean I know Rihanna's in it like you said. Yeah. Chandler, not Chandler Jim Parsons. Parsons. <laughs> Chandler Parsons from uh, Houston Rockets. <laughs> uh, Dallas Mavericks. Or Dallas Mavericks now, yeah. Yeah, he was at the Knicks, right? But, uh, but I digress. He, he was he was at That's Houston. hey, sticking with our sports theme. It's just see it all <laughs> it all comes it back all around. It all ties back in. It's a real okay. talk. So, okay, so I who is this Parsons guy? I explain to me, Gallant. Big Bang Theory. Sheldon. He plays Sheldon. <sighs> Bazinga. Bazinga. <laughs> Bazinga. I, I should have known that. I should have known that. So him and Rihanna are in there. I guess and there's he's in, uh, those ca- Is it Capital One commercial season now? What? He's on a commercial. He's Yeah, he's on that commercial is it too. Intel? HP? It's like a it's some, On some yeah. sort of insurance commercial. Like, there's some sort of commercial that is supposed to be funny. I, I, I don't know. I don't find Jim Parsons as funny as he used to be. He's kind of just annoying on the Big Bang now. Here's a question. But uh, Can actors get... Like you know, when actors people say they get they get cast, they get typecast. Has he become that guy? Has he become cast oh, as kind yeah. of the quirky comedic guy? Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a sci-fi he, nerd almost. And exactly. he he understands that too, and he's playing it smart. That that's called marketing yourself to know your strengths, and he knows that's well, obviously what works, he comes off. It works well. Yeah. I mean, look at your guy Jeff Bridges. I and, mean, he's marketed himself. And he kind of. and he's over forty, Jim Parsons. And people yep. don't know he doesn't seem that old on the show. Well, all those played, guys are all old. Yeah, they're, they're like. Late thirties, yeah. Mid early, mid late thirties. Late bloomers, exactly. It's so weird. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy who plays uh, Leonard. He was in the. Uh, he, was Mis- in, he was in Mr. Bean. Uh, did you movie. do you know what he all, was also in? He was in Christmas Vacation. He really? played little. Uh, I think it was his name. Rod- they call him Rodney or Rory. Rory sort of the R. Mm. Whatever their names are in those movies. Chevy Chase's son. He's the second one, and he was in uh, the show. Ro- he's on Rose- Roseanne. He was on Roseanne. He was on Roseanne. Wow. I didn't so like, he is. Yeah. He is old. He's been around though. I mean, he's had a decent career, honestly. And he dated Kaylee Kugo, so or Kaylee Kugo, whatever her name Kaylee is. Kaylee Kugo. I mean, okay. so he he won. Okay, so, so got, yeah. So we got hard. home overall. Number two. Get hard. Get hard. I, Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart. Isn't that the one that Joel's been looking forward to for a long time? Joel keeps I'm just so I'm just I'm just done with Kevin Hart as get, far as comedy movies. Get Hard is Joel's Star Wars. I heard I heard a guy told me it was so good he went and saw it twice. 
I heard it's not that good. I I'm not <laughs> see. Okay, that's my problem. Okay, before we go anywhere else, see, I the, my thing is lately, if I hear something's not good, I'm not gonna go watch it. But then again, I'm taking away my you know my good opinion chance. of something because the other day I watched a movie that someone told me was horrible, Thank you. and I was like, wow, yeah. this is a really good movie. Do you ever feel betrayed by your friends when yes. they tell you something like yes. I do too all the time? And then, but like then I feel I, like betrayal, y'all didn't like oblivion. Betray, but then, you, but then you betray yourself though if you go see, see it. I was gonna it's say really, Gatlin's got to. If you go see it, if you go see it, and you like think it's gonna be good, and it's not, you just wasted money. Here, now here's but my. But you got to try. You got to risk it to get the biscuit. Scared money don't make money. Right there. Do you, you ever? Do you ever? Are you ever afraid to watch a film because your friends haven't told you, like told you not to watch it, but you don't tell them because then you're gonna feel like you're gonna hurt their feelings. That's easy though, because I don't have friends. I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, that, that is a benefit. That is a bit all online people. Facebook. I, I, I just go, if they don't, no one else wants to see that movie, and I know I do, what's up, theater by myself? See? I love movies by I myself. I love theaters by myself. Yeah, it's the best thing, but it's kind of <sighs> creepy if you're, like, I watching a, a, not a scary movie. I mean, any movie pretty much can be creepy. <laughs> scary if you're, by your, if you're by yourself in, like, a movie theater, it's kind of oh, creepy geez, I had a scary movie, or a scary uh, preview come on for, a, I think it was It Follows or something, and I'm sitting there, and I'm kind of like, whoa, I'm at an AMC theater all by myself. And AM, which AMC theater was it though? It was the one in Quell Springs Mall. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, but still. The one in Crossroads. Well, I'm not gonna go. Death. Crossroads. Do you know what's creepy? Tinseltown at night, like being in there when it's I've, empty. I've the heard one of by McCart- or Mar- Martin. Yeah, it's right out there by, yeah. um, uh, by the zoo. zoo. Yeah, right, like my like McDonald's. That's why we all. Yeah. That's that's why we all go to Warren theaters. That's right. Or Harkins. I like Harkins too, kind of. Sometimes, do. yeah, sometimes. But I love Warren. Warren's. Uh, did you hear they opened up in uh, Tulsa? Tulsa. I thought it was broken. Broken era. area, yeah. Basically the same area, yeah. It's, it's kind of like more Norman, Oklahoma City. Yeah, it's to all me, the same area. Oklahoma City. Okay, but guys, I promise I'm going to get to the list, but I do have to mention something that I thought was worth saying, and I and I totally forgot to tell you guys. What's that? We talked about, you know, last week we did our list of animated films. We did a, talked a lot What's about that? animated films, and we had mentioned The Incredibles several times, mm-hmm. and I realized that I hadn't seen that film in probably ten years. Wow. Well, I guess well, I guess it came out in '04. So I, pro- I probably had eight years, eight, eight, nine years. Yeah, that's I a went while back away. and watched it the other day. That was an awesome film. It still I, holds up. This weekend, I, I think I, I started like Saturday night. I couldn't finish it. I finished it on Sunday. That is a great film. Yeah, it's a really well done. The storyline, it's got a very Robert. mature, mature storyline, but it's not like inappropriate for children either. Mm-hmm. It fits. It's great. Yeah, but it's like a super. It's a superhero movie. It's great. It's, it's fantastic. It's one, I mean, if we would count superhero movies top best ever, you know, it'd be up there. And the, the director said he would never do a sequel unless it was better than the first. And now there's rumors that there's going to be a sequel. There so. is a sequel one coming. Hey, it's I'm, in production. So, I'm so excited. Anyway, I'm sorry, guys. I, Keep I going down your list, so man. Home at number one. Get Hard at number two. Number three, the highly anticipated but not amped up motivated. <laughs> not like the real talk. Sequel to Divergent Insurgent. That's a tongue twister. They can insert that movie back into the oh. the storage units because I really don't care. I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those other teams. So, man's across the board. Is I mean, we've, we've talked about our opinions for little countless of times. You know, if it <laughs> makes money, it makes money. They're going to keep making movies. But the, regardless, it's going to happen. This you know? show is turning very anti-sequel all of a sudden. Except for Star Wars. Star Wars! Hey, baby. and Age of Ultron, except for one guy. Okay, and then I just thought it in my head. We're probably talk- I'll touch on this later, but there is a sports movies sequels. The sequels. Plural, yeah, I, think, I think I know where this is going. That, it, that some people feel like this has gone too far. And in me, there's only one of them that was not even good. The rest of them, phenomenal. But we'll touch on that later when we get to the movies, sports movies. Okay, so oh, okay. home number one, get started number two, and third, insurgent at third, and third, and third, and insurgent at third, <laughs> number four, the one that Cinderella, Cinderella. Cinderella. We got Cinder. I again, I haven't seen it. I do want to see it though. I do want to see it too. I thought you would see it by now, Hayden. I did too. You have okay. a girlfriend. Come My on. My girlfriend is coming into town um, this next, or I'm going to uh, Tahlequah to visit her, so I may go see that Saturday night. I, that is may there be. a movie theater? You gotta let us know how it is, man. Yeah, you know, I don't. Yeah, there is. There is. It's when small, you, but it's worth. Oh, it. I do. Remember when we it. come back next week, I mean, you're gonna tell us how it is. I will and give you guys. Go get I will your give best you guys review. The lowdown on Cinderella. Okay, so Cinderella at fourth, coming in at fifth. 
Well, uh, you yeah. know what? You know what? Fifth does to four. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I mean, it follows. It, it follows. follows. <laughs> it just follows Cinderella. I'm kidding. But uh, this weekend, I do. I am gonna go see a movie Saturday. I'm not sure which one it is. I I really want to see Fury Seven, but I have a bad feeling it might be sold out. If not, I might just have to go see Get Hard. Oh, it's, you're kind of curious. You're just like, what is the buzz? I gotta see this. I don't want to see it, but I do. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm, gonna Kevin take I'm gonna take a bag with me to vomit out of. I'm kidding. We'll see how it goes. You know what we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna have a fun little segment called Wild Card. We got sports movies today. What do sports have? They have wild cards. In this segment, we're gonna do a round the horn kind of format. We're gonna toss ideas out there, and y'all are just. We're just gonna comment back and forth as a group. But first, we have some breaking news, and Joel. Delivers that that breaking news to us. Not exactly breaking news, but it's been out for a bit. I checked the Twitter feed, and according to, I mean, Ryan Reynolds tweeted this out, uh, saying a PG-13 Deadpool coming out, and they're already starting production on it. We there was a picture put out a couple uh, days ago with him sitting as a character, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if you guys know Deadpool. Um, Deadpool is kind of like a, a smarkier version of Spider-Man. And he's got swords, and he's got he's got a mouth to him. You know, he's got he's got he's got some mouth to him. He's like he's a he's a smart mouth uh, swordsman who just does a lot of crazy things. You know, he causes a lot of uh, shenanigans amongst the Marvel universe, and he's going to be a part of the Fox universe. And his thing says, you know, there's still going to be some fourth wall breaking. There's going to be some chimichangas. <laughs> it's kind of joking. He's kind of joking around, kind of like an in character mode. And he says, zero to panic, I promise. So he's promising people, don't worry. Just because it's radar doesn't mean it can't be uh, fourth wall breaking or exciting or basically what a lot of comic book lovers of Deadpool want. So what do you guys think? You know, in a hospital when they have, like, the smiley faces that tell how you, like, your level of pain, you know? Well, imagine my levels, like, there's a frowny face going all the way to a smiley face. Mine is right in the middle. No emotion. I, I... I would like to say that I care, but I, I just can't. Deadpool's awesome. He's an awesome comic book character, though. I mean, once he gets on screen, you'll see why. He's pretty funny. Write it down. Write it down. Well, Gallon. Well, now throw it back to Gallon. I'm ready. Know. I'm ready for some wild card segments. Wild, wild card. card. All right, guys. This is what we're gonna do. Just so the listeners kind of know what we're gonna do. All right. So, so this is the example. Joel's gonna give us an, like a topic or an idea or a question. He's gonna throw it at me and Hayden, and we're gonna answer it to like give a little in-depth analysis, give a little answer that he wants, and he's also gonna answer it. And then we're just gonna rotate around the horde, bring up ideas, spitfire, kind of go just wild card action. Yeah. So we're gonna have Hayden start us off on wild card. Hayden, what well, what is your wild? What are you gonna do right here? In wild well, guys, card? in keeping with the sports theme here. I, I know that my I've had this conversation with, with several friends. What sports... There are a lot of sports films out there. And, you know, the thing I love about sports films is they're usually based on reality. And I think the best films are based on reality. What do you guys... Th what sports film... Here's my question. What sports film do you guys think needs to be made that hasn't been made? And who would you like to star in it? Would I go first? Yeah, go I would like to go... I know this is, people like to say it's fake. Pro wrestling. Um... I'd like to see. Yeah, there's I'd, a surprise. I'd like to see a movie done on life of uh, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. I don't know if you guys know Macho Man Randy Savage. He's a Hall of Famer now in the WWE, and his story is pretty interesting. He's been in a lot of uh, real life, you know, real life feuds with a lot of other people in the company, like Hulk Hogan and stuff. And I think it'd be really interesting to bring that into perspective because. Everyone likes to say, well, pro wrestling is fake and everything. But I think that, you know, having a real life story in there, kind of like almost in The Wrestler. Like, I don't know if you guys seen The Wrestler, but that one's kind of the same way. It's revolved, but it's revolved around a smaller organization, not like globally, like WWE. So I think it'd be very interesting yeah, to see the you, hard life. Who going would you like to star in that film? As Randy Savage? Oh, man. I don't know. There's a lot of different. I mean, Mickey Rourke? It, we already seen him as a wrestler, but. Um, why not? I mean, Mickey Warwick's a fantastic actor. Um, but I don't know. To fill in that role for for Randy Savage, he he's very much his own character in real life. Like he's always like, "Oh yeah!" Like in real life, he actually talks like that. So it's got to be an actor who knows how to do some good voice impersonation and knows how to be charismatic because he was very charismatic in wrestling. 
that's one thing that carries over from the traditional golden age of wrestling was that charisma, that larger than life uh, character like Hulk Hogan. I uh, hey, yeah. I would I would watch, I would watch the film. Oh yeah, I Dude. think yeah, I think it'd be very interesting. Okay, so that thumbs Spe- up, thumbs speaking, up for me. Speaking of Randy Savage, a guy on my Facebook yesterday, one of my cousins tweeted that he saw Randy Savage, in I believe it was Ada, at an oil uh, oil field site. And he says, guys, I found him. He's not dead. He's alive. Oh my he's just lost about 150 pounds. Holy and he, cow. And he is not uh, friendly to pictures. So I'm good. I, I, if anything, Too soon. <laughs> if anything, it may actually be him. You know, he's living out his life as an old But, you know, it might be also another one. Another awesome one would be the Ultimate Warrior. He also recently died in um, 2014. And he delivered an incredibly creepy but, like, very emotional speech last year, days before his death on uh, television talking about life and growing through you know with the ultimate um with the ultimate energy of living your life and you know living it to the fullest and being the best you can be like an encouraging speech that he was talking about how his life even when you're dead your spirit you can live on and like how you live your life so hey hey, i I think i would think that's very interesting too i would want and you could call the movie like savage you know oh yeah i would definitely i'd call it macho or something there you go like it's that'd be awesome because I used to just love the I used to love Randy Savage on my WW uh oh, WCW wrestling game. He was on my in WCW too. So I remember. I, I remember Did y'all ever play that game on the Nintendo sixty four? Yes. It was the hardest game. It was I a hard game. Yeah. Pick my up cousin always. I played beat me. uh I played WWF. No mercy. I was on the WWF side <laughs> of everything. All right. It was okay. Monday Night Wars. Right, we're getting yeah. away. We're right. getting Here, away. Here, from... how about how about I throw yeah. the next question? Well, hold on. He I or, answered his. I, yeah, thing. yeah, Gatlin. I, I want to oh, know. Oh, you want to go? Yeah. Um. Go. Okay. I've thought about this for a while, and one movie I would love to see get made, sports related wise too, because I'm a big biopic guy, and uh, I love any movies that are based off someone. And there's a really good book written written about this character who I wish they would take this book. Kind of, it, it has a narrative feel to it, but a little bit of us. You know, it's fictional, but it's it's I like, got some. Facts to it. The Mickey Mantle story. Now, it's a little biased because he is from Oklahoma. I like I'm a baseball guy. I love Mickey Mantle, but he was the greatest of his time. Well, he's one of the greatest of his time. He was the most marketable Yankee that was on that team. The Yankees were America's team. They still are to a sense, but the sports are so different now. But the Yankees were from probably 1920s to, I'd say, at least the 60s or 70s. They were America's team. No matter if you didn't, I mean, I'd, I've never been a Yankees fan, but if I was going to say one team that symbolizes America, the Yankees is who I would say. Mickey Mantle was the face of them for two decades. He has a great story. He he lived in, to me, like I've said before, the 50s is one of my favorite eras, eras ever. And um, uh, he he's had a, he had a def, he had very eccentric off-the-field lifestyle, which led <laughs> to his early death. And he died like 62 of liver cancer. Um but at the end of his life, he found he he. I wouldn't say he found his he hadn't found his faith, but uh, he became a better person at the end of his life. He tried to fix. He, you know, he had a bad relationship between his ex-wife and his children. He tried to fix everything, and then when he died, um, a little he died at 65 because of the his liver finally gave out. And um, when he died, I think he had everything resolved. And to me, the the whole story, just how he developed from a little kid from. Uh, though it's Commerce Common is what he's called. He's from Commerce, Oklahoma. Absolutely. You see him develop from that kid to become one of the biggest icons in America, from a small town Oklahoma kid, biggest icon in America, then kind of fall to grace and then yeah. rise to Who glory. Who would you like awesome. to play him? And would you want it to cover his whole life or just a segment and then with flashbacks? That's, yeah, it's pretty tough well, to see, do Well, see, if you read this book that I'm talking about, he's actually in heaven and it's doing flashbacks of his life. Showing it's like a real play. He's watching projections. And uh, I thought about this. And to me, there's a movie called 61 Asterisk, made by Billy Crystal. It's an HBO film about the Roger Maris Mickey Mantle race for the home run record 1961. Thomas Jane played him. And to me, that was the guy. He looks just like Mickey Mantle. Um, he'd be perfect. But honestly, a guy I think would be cool. It'd be different. I don't know. He, he doesn't look exactly like him, but I think he would do the part justice would be Tom Hardy. Tom yeah, Hardy's okay, fantastic. Okay. But he's a great actor, and I haven't, fantastic I have never really actor. fully heard besides Warrior. But he had the he had the Jersey act, or the Boston accent. Oh, he's the, fantastic. He's, but I don't know if he'd be able to do like full English voice. I don't know how he's, great he, he is. With he's it, great, yeah. and with he seems voices, athletic. So. And I will say there is something to casting an athletic looking actor. guy. And Mickey Mantle is one of the most like athletic looking exactly, guys of all time. Big forearms. I like it. So. Tom I like Hardy. Tom Hardy's just another one of those guys too. Like Christian Bell that like, gets into the role. 
I, I like I like the picks here. And I, I, I'll tell you right now, the, the party lot, like his off the field antics was like hardcore. So like I mean, it's gonna it, it's gonna be. feel like for everyone, but the ending it feels what gives the movie. It's got good it. resolution. Yes, right. and, and those, I think those are the best stories. Mm-hmm. You got to look Johnny I, Cash story. Walk the line. It, it's got resolution exactly, exactly. I. What I would, would yours be? I would say for me, like, and I, I've been thinking about this, and my the bias side of me would be Twenty One, the Barry Sanders story. Oh yeah. But I'm I'm not gonna go there because there's just <laughs> we not won't enough. tell you why this bias. You're, you're the, Detroit Lions fan, right? That's that's exactly why. <laughs> that's, that's why. Exactly, it is. That's exactly. <laughs> but you know, when you're the greatest and you've always been the greatest, there's there's not really a story there. But I will say this, I think a story that that may not be able to be told because he's he's kind of a villain looking back at it. But Ty Cobb. Oh yeah, I think that would be a really fascinating film, or at oh, least yeah. a mini series. Well, they they made one actually about him, Tommy Lee Jones. No, nineteen ninety one. Go watch it. Called Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay though. <laughs> I, I think the Barry Sanders one would be a really good. Breaking one. news in the first round of the wild card matchup: Hayden oh, Hefner is eliminated problem. by. Facts. <laughs> you lost. That's all right. You well, just okay, had your so, frozen. So obviously, since there already is a Ty, Tommy Lee Jones, I can see it. Oh, he did okay, it. It happened. <laughs> in my fictional Ty Cobb movie, I would want. I would a younger want, Tommy Lee Jones. I would Lee want Jones. a younger the Tommy Lee Jones. The 1991 version. Probably, yeah. I would, I would. If I could have. It's all right, Hayden. It's all right. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So okay. okay I would tell you, I would watch. I would watch that. All right. So what do what do you want to talk about, Joel? Um. Okay. <laughs> I know how we touched on like what sports or like what topic we'd like to do a documentary, not a documentary, a film over. Mm-hmm. I usually watch these America's Game documentaries on the NFL Network. Oh yeah, those are they're, excellent. They're f- awesome. What I'd like to see is a film, you know, a film based off that, you know, almost cast the entire thing, but focus on one's person's one person's journey the entire way. And my question would be, what team? From what year would you like to do one over? Oh, that's good. That's a good question. Any sport. Any sport. Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. Have you seen, before? You, have you ever seen those? Uh, it's a football or a football life. A football life. Yeah, yeah those I love, I love those too. Those Just, awesome. Yeah, almost. Lyle like Alzado. Oh yeah, that's that story. would be a, that would be crazy. And that would be, you know how like his whole thing. He's like yeah. a Mickey Mantle kind oh, of exactly. thing. Oh exactly. I mean, he was such, and he was such a steroids yeah. fanatic. I yeah. Mean, I think there's ruined, a lot of yeah, ruined his life. Exactly. I mean. Oh my gosh, That's guys! I th- so, no, it's it's uh, give me like probably five seconds to ponder this. Okay, I have a, I'm pretty biased when it comes to my sports. I'm a Cardinals fan. I'm a OU football fan. I NFL. I used to when I was a kid growing up, I was a Rams fan. So I loved the greatest show on turf. Oh yeah. And then and uh, basketball. Obviously, it is uh, the Thunder. But as a kid, I was a Lakers fan due to Shaquille O'Neal, the Diesel. <laughs> but uh, I would say a team that I think's interesting. This is to me. This is phenomenal. That nothing. There is little documentary things made on them, but the 1995, 96, I believe, or is 96, 97. It was one of those three years. Those uh, end of Michael Jordan's career. The Bulls. They had the greatest record in NBA history, 72 and 10. Yeah. And guys, they had so many egos on that team. They have Dennis Rodman. The guy's <laughs> nuts. They call him the Worm. I mean, from Oklahoma. He's from southeastern Oklahoma State. That's crazy. Uh, didn't even didn't even have a it was a it was an airplane. He was a janitor at an airport down there. I don't even know what the da- the town he was in. And uh, the guy's weird. He has Scotty Pippen from Central Arkansas. No oh, one yeah. even wanted to draft him. You have the greatest player ever in Michael Jordan, and you have. You know, they have these little, you have like Steve Kerr, now the coach of the Golden State Warriors. You have uh, you have all these different things. I mean, you have all these role players, essentially, but they all have egos. And you have Phil Jackson, the coach, the Zen master. Everyone knows who Zen, when it comes to coaching, everyone knows who Phil Jackson is. I think that would be so interesting just to see. You could even, like they do on the ESPN 30 for 30s, you could go and touch a little bit on the, like how they became what they are, which they did in their early years before Michael took his little Space Jam break. Yeah. And, uh I think, dude, the seven, the year they won seventy two games. That team is the greatest team in NBA history. I mean, why why has there not been? Well, and with anything? the egos on that team, that would you'd have some cool characters. I mean, think about Dennis Rodman's character. Oh, he'd be sitting well, there in that interview, like the interviews lit on well, a Mary. You, and I know this is a little a little bit different than what Joel asked, but how cool would it be if they made a film? You know how they'll sometimes make films that are based on kind of loosely based on real life situations. Yeah. How good of a film would that be? Oh, I would I would go what in a hurry. I'd be there in a heartbeat. I mean, like that movie. would be really cool. You know, I. I, and I've been thinking about this, and I think I've, I think I've figured it out. Who would yours be? And I don't know what year it was, but I would, 
I would say the SMU team that got the death penalty. The Pony Express. The Pony, the Pony Excess. It's a great 30 oh, for 30, yeah. by the way. But I think, I think that would be, or the Spirit of St. Louis, but that would be... Mm-hmm. That'd be a raunchy movie. So, but I, I would say <laughs> I'd prob- still watch it though. Probably, probably the SMU death penalty because it was so drastic what happened, and it's never like, happened who, again. Who gets the death penalty? They didn't even do that to USC a couple of years ago, and their thing, everything they had going on was worse. Or Miami. Or Miami. The U. <laughs> the U, baby. What was that guy's Neil? Some Shapiro. Oh, Shapiro. My, uh, Mike Shapiro. Something That's like that. That's a creepy. That name just sounds like, hey, guys, I'm a snake. Exactly. Like, who a trusts snake. a guy named Shapiro? <laughs> I, I think don't. Gallon, if your last name was Shapiro, I probably would. Tr- I mean, I probably <laughs> would guys, do a radio show. My name is Gallon Shapiro, and I will be representing y'all's finances for the rest of the your yeah. call, collegiate career. Hey, what is that? Scared money doesn't make. Scared money don't make money. <laughs> Risky to give the biscuit. All right, let me give up mine quickly so we can move on to one more. All right. Fast fire. We got Jatlin. We got uh, Gat- Jatlin. 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 Hey, that's Jatlin. what the first that's happened. Sh- Shapiro. <laughs> All right. Jatlin Shapiro. Well, mine mine would be. I'm a love. I'm I'm, on, I'm a huge NFL fan, and I love underdog stories a lot. It's gonna be the New York Giants. <laughs> it's not the New York Giants. Oh, it's not the New York Giants. It's uh, Kurt Warner's uh, St. Louis. Oh yeah. I Super almost Bowl said run. that. I almost said that. I want to follow the story of Kurt Warner on the entire season, along with uh, the the Great Show and Turf, uh, Turf with Marshall Falk too. Great uh, choice. Uh, awesome, awesome team mm-hmm. that came together in the. Biggest show, I mean, the biggest game of the year, and I like to see how that team came together. And they lost their quarterback early on. They're all, you know, they're all star quarterback. And people, I mean, it's a lot similar to, you know, what the, the Tom pa- Brady, what happened Patriots, with Tom Brady, yeah. the Patriots. But I just feel like Kurt Warner's story has got so much more to it to tell than bagging groceries. Than Tom Brady, exactly. Seeing how he can, you know, adding some drama to it. There could be there there could be playing parts in his life where he was just doubting himself if he could do anything. Oh yeah. And he makes it to the, the to Super Bowl and it wins. I can't believe I, I forgot about that one. It's that a, was that's a story I would have loved. It's a fantastic. I've been thinking about that for years. A, I, I think one that's one of my favorite uh, America's games on NFL Network. No, I, I, I so. and I love Kurt. And think about Kurt Warner. He's a good guy. Oh yeah. He's not a comp. He's not going to be one of those characters that you don't know if he's good. You don't know if he's yeah. bad. If he's going to hurt you, PR wise. Exactly. Or anything, yeah. Like I love. I love the, that would be a great film. I I love it. And you could get a whole host of guys. To, to be cast because I mean he was what in his early mid twenties. I think he cast Michael B. Jordan for Marshall Falk. That wouldn't be yeah. bad. He need muscle up, but he muscle can. up. But I just tell you, right now his one of his kids has a MS. And, oh, and he's he's a great yeah guy. he's a great guy he's a great guy. Okay, Gatlin. Here's a, here's the last wild card. Okay, guys, you ready? Yes. Okay, this is this is a question I want y'all to answer it. This is what bothers me about sports movies. I was going back looking, you know, I've already knew my list. I was looking in my head. I was like, how did these not even make my top five movies of all time? Why do we, as an industry, why does the United States, as pop culture-wise, why do we minimalize, you know, marginalize how good sports movies really are? Their stories, you know, how they're done. You know, if you look at the past awards, I think Rocky may be the only sports movie, maybe besides Chariots of Fire, to win Best Score, to even get an Academy Award, that's a good. That's a good question. Moneyball got nominated. And that was a while. That was a, that was a couple was it years. The fighter, ago. fighter got a, a couple of Oscar. No, uh, it got. Wins. It got. Not, it got. But it didn't like best Christian picture Bell, wise. But Christian, no, yeah, best, not best picture. Christian Bell won best supporting actor. I think. But like to me, that's more of a like. To, it is a good. That's it, but there's not. It just wasn't. It just, wasn't, it just was it, not it, the movie of the year. Yeah, exactly. You're asking why and, it was never the. And movie I was looking of the back. Year. Remember the Titans? All those. Those are just like great movies. And I think I see where you're going with this because it's got all the story elements. I mean, yeah. like written into the the story is ups and downs and games and you know close wins and crushing defeats and yeah so yeah. my question is why do you all think why do why are they why are we why do we underplay sports movies why are they so you know just thrown aside yeah I, you know i think it may have something to do with the fact that we are such a sports saturated culture um you know we watch sports all the time on tv and then you know here's a sports film i think we're so it may have, and this, this is just me, you know, thinking off the top of my head here, but I think it may be so ingrained to us, the here and the now of sports. You know, there's not, we talk about legacy, but it, all the drive is here and now, and what have you done for me lately in yeah. terms of sports. I think sports films force us to go back and look at teams in the past. Um, I know there's been times I've watched sports films of teams that used to be really good, and all I can think about is, man, they're really bad now, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, you know... Th- 
we are Marshall. I, all I could think about was how bad Marshall was. And I know that's not the story. Yeah, but exactly. But I think, I think we're so focused on sports in the here and the now that it's hard to look back. That's, and that could be totally off, but that's just yeah. my, that'd be my opinion. I just think that sports movies can only relate to sports fans. That's why. And uh, let me speak out a bit here. Um, Academy movies tend to be art. Art movies, I'm not saying sports movies can't be art, but sports movies are spectacles. They're life stories. They are not not always fiction, but when they are fiction, people can sort of get an idea of how it's going to happen. People are like, oh, sport movie, that means underdog goes through this, comes out on top. You know, it's not saying not saying that it can't be I mean, good or I, different. I'm just saying that they kind of lose themselves with just how relatable every single one of them are. I'll see though. I, they're they're all almost the same. I don't of. know. I, I can mean, almost counter that. Yeah, everything you I, said though, I could in my in my opinion, I could counter that and honestly say the opposite. And that's to me honestly, I feel like why do why do we um. Why do why do why do we say that they are why they can't be like what art movies are? Why can't they be they artful? They can be. They are. But no. But they. And to me, I'm not saying like it's just for sports fans. To me, sports are the thing about sports. They relate to life, and that's the hard. That's the hard thing. I feel like it is for people to understand that are maybe more artistic. But to me, sports are uh, is an art in itself. Yeah. And, and I think and the stories that go along with sports movies, especially ones that have been actually narrative written ones I feel like they get thrown aside just because they, ha- they have sports in them yeah I agree I feel like it's a couple of my films on my list you know there aren't actually a lot of victories in these films the, the story is more built around sports mm-hmm. yeah and I can kind of see where both of you are coming from Joel if I understand I, correctly yeah. you're saying that you don't like I, don't, I, I, I like them I never oh, no, said no, no, I'm I, just saying why no, people no, might saying, not like them I was going to say you don't like the fact that I don't agree with it I'm you don't like that the could sunshine and roses at the end of some of them because it seems like no I like them it's just I don't think that critics buy into them I see what you're saying I, what, I, Gatlin I agree with you in that um, if we can see sports films as an avenue to tell stories and, and, and I, sometimes yeah. that is a victory story sometimes but you're right I, it surprises me that in a culture that loves sports, eats, drinks, sleeps sports, that we don't see more good sports films. And here's the interesting thing. The ones that do get nominated or do win awards, they're usually about a small group, a smaller group, not a whole team. Yeah. You or know, like, like the fighter, three pe- like three people pretty much, like Christian Bell, uh, Amy Adams, and... Uh, Tom, I think Tom Hardy. No, I can't remember. It's Mark like Wal- Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, yeah. But those three characters revolve around there. Rocky, obviously him and the people surrounding him. You see everything in a smaller group. Like, remember, like, movies like, uh, remember the Titans. It's a, it's a team. It's yeah, a it's team. a team. And, like, blind side, it, blind yeah. side's around Michael Orr. And it's a really hard, it's really hard for the Academy to, like, pick, pick somebody who, like, stand it out, be, stood out because they're all part of the same story they're one thing as one story that's and, what I, and that's and that what beautiful. and that what that's what bothers the academies because they can't nominate a whole team to be an actor or a whole team to be an actress and that's why they're not getting the actors and actresses awards as much i think that's a better reason for it but and in all honesty yeah. i'll say this i think a lot of times they're not they don't get more respect because they're not as artsy you know and, and there's some, nothing very artsy about. Viewed not as artsy. And, yeah. some th- and some of them are over the top. Yeah, I mean, well, but definitely. there are, there are over the top arts when movies the game, too. Exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. I, I see. Like I, you can almost counter like any argument they have with like vice versa. You yeah, could, yeah. but it, you can do that with anything. And Hayden Gu- guys, is laughing. Guys, we've got a correction. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> On what? Joel, why don't you tell the good people in radio? I, I said we're not talking about this because <laughs> I'm getting so mad at this. <laughs> fact of news that is coming uh, yeah. through. Remember when I said that Deadpool was PG-13? Well, I'm not even sure what life is anymore because I am reading on comicbook.com says that Fox has officially said that it is rated R. But it's April Fool's, so someone's lying to me. Now, I'm not lying to you guys. Someone's doing an April Fool's joke just to me hey, here. I did that in one of my classes today. I got a question wrong Someone, on a test, yeah. and I said, April Fool's. Someone is trolling me right now <laughs> in Hollywood just to make me here in Norman, Oklahoma, angry. And now I don't even know if I know what life well, is well, guys, anymore. You know how at the beginning of the jo- soul, uh, show, Joel, show, Joel, you guys know this how This is how Joel to- right now. Yeah. 
He's like, news! Do you guys, do you guys remember how at the beginning of the show that Joel said that he would no longer be with us? Um, I think that was a little bit of foresight. He's got two <laughs> strikes. Two new strikes. One and more And you know what strike. happens in baseball when you get a third one, Joel? And I don't get it because these all these you are out of here. These news are just killing me. I should not have looked up news today. You gotta beep beep beep. That's beep, why beep, I looked. That's why I looked beep, up beep. all these other news you, you on the paper. You gotta do the research, Joel. All the other news on this paper are fact because I checked them yesterday. It's not April Fools, but unless they're rumors. But today I was hit with this news and I thought it was real, but it's not, and I'm angry about that. So all we can do is move on. No, no. And let it go. There will be no moving on. <laughs> well, speaking of let it go, what was, was your other... <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said let it go. That's right, why I said good. let it go. All right, Frozen so 2 officially, guys. Don't what, worry. What? Frozen 2 is official. But that, it's going to be that rated time, R, okay? but, but that one, to be fair, though, happened after our show. They said that I was a... That That's was true. A, yeah. This one happened during our show, so someone, like I said, is trolling me. At least me you were allowed to give yourself... And making me angry. Correction for that day. Not to wait a whole week and be like, guys, I messed up last week. Yeah. All right, guys. So here's the moral of the story is, is everything Joel says, don't believe it. Question just, it. Just check it. Why Brian do you even Williams. have me on the I just show? <laughs> why do you have me on the, the show? He is the Brian Williams of wire.ou.edu. That's not, that's not good. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, we're just messing with I'm you, Joel. Be, I want to be the, uh, what's his name? The Katie Couric? Katie Couric? No, I'm not. The Bob I'm Dylan. Kidding. I'm just kidding. We. Uh, I want to be the Johnny Carson of the Wire. The Johnny Carson. Of the, the Johnny wire. Carson of the Wire. Yeah, well, we'll guess. Take... Hey, Johnny. Here's can you uh, Johnny. tell the fans what we got going on hey, right what, now? Do you know what Johnny Carson didn't do? What? He always had his facts. Here's the thing, though. I'm starting fresh. Okay. Okay. Slate, For the slate. second time, I'm starting fresh. But to start this fresh we'll version fresh. point two, version two point oh. We got our top five favorite movies of all time, and we even have some honorable mentions. But I'm going to throw it off to Gatlin because he's got three to throw off quickly. So, okay, so are we giving our top five all time? Yeah, but first you're going to give us your honorable mentions. But this is sports wise, right? Yeah, sports movies. So our fans know because we've already done our top five favorite of all time. Sorry. Yeah, no, we're sports. good. They, they got it. Well, I sports just want to clear, clarification. The, 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 the theme of the show is sports. So Today, we, yeah. we absolutely mean sports. So, Gatlin, give us your sports. All right, my three, honorable mentions. I have, okay, we have some. We always do honorable mention with our top five. I, I had three. I couldn't just not have these three included. So, first off, I want to throw this movie out there: Miracle, about the 1980 Good U.S. Choice. hockey team. Good choice. Classic movie. Disney does excellent in a lot of their sports movies. They write about or Kurt they make. Russell. Kurt Russell gives one of the best speeches ever in sports movie history. Can I throw a fact at you? Yes. Disney, this is a real fact, by the way. Disney's last words writing said Kurt Russell. So maybe he was planning this miracle movie before his death. I don't think so. That's but awesome. Let's, let's move. Let's and then um, my other two, first off, I, y'all are probably going to judge me. This isn't in my top five, but Remember the Titans, another Disney oh, one. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, hey, it, it's in my top eight, but yeah. I couldn't put it in there because I have another one that I really like, and... But Remember the Titans is a great team movie, great about, it's great for more than just one reason, though. It's great about prejudice. It talks about the time of what it was, yeah. thing, what, what life was like, and what it's like to when they desegregated schools. Mm. And to me, that's a great movie. And lastly, Moneyball. I have a little baseball bias, bias but Moneyball is a, great, is a great movie, great story. Michael, a Michael Lewis story. Michael Lewis wrote The Blind Side. Wrote, he wrote all, not these aren't the screenplays, he wrote the books. Yeah. And uh, he does a great job when he writes his books. A lot of his m- books have been adapted to film. Uh, Brad Pitt delivered. Well. He looks nothing like Billy Bean, and I didn't bother me at all. Yeah, they translate well, though. Uh, and then I'm going to just say that, that that movie restored my faith in being able to make dramatic sports movies. Because it's been a while since like a dramatic one had been made, at least since was that, my... Uh, yeah. That was after The Blind Side, though, right? Yeah, it was after The Blind Because to me, Blind Side's kind of cheesy. Cheesy? Nah. Because I mean, when I think of dr- yeah, we'll we'll get into that later. Yeah. But well, let's but go out to my honorable mention. One of my first mention? ones is The Blind Side. <laughs> well, there ain't nothing wrong. It's a great yeah. movie, though. It's an honorable mention. I like The Blind Side mainly because of uh, the performance by Sandra Bullock. Absolutely mm-hmm. wonderful. I mean, she plays the role of a a mother so well on screen, and I think this was one of her best serious performances ever. Um, I'm a huge NFL fan, and the story of Michael Orr obviously is a good one to talk about. Like I said, you can talk about a lot of different stories in the NFL or any sport, 
that can be did, touching. Did you know he was actually really offended though by some parts of that movie? Yeah, because he's not stupid it, at it all. It made him look like he didn't know sports. Yeah, and that was like his biggest thing. Was he said, "I always knew how to play football." Mm-hmm. And I think, and I think the issue was, you know, they wanted to make Sandra Bullock look like a like a better teacher. You know, they, they had to introduce I, some contrast. Yeah. If he was always just a beast. It would have been kind of a boring movie. Like you know. I do like the opening of that movie. How they talk about the blinds. Like how they got introduced. Yeah. That is like one of my favorite parts. Oh, of and the that movie. scene because they they show us the Thiesman Joe Thiesman 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 Thiesman. Thiesman. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic name for a movie too. Okay, Lawrence, Joel, Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. What's your next? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Joel, what's your next one? My next one's Airbud. <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious. Airbud. April Fools. Just kidding. I love really, it. I really am serious about this. Um, Airbud. It came out in I believe '96 or '97. Featured uh, a lot of different actors. Uh, it was kind of a B-level le- movie with uh, sports, obviously with a dog playing basketball. Pretty unrealistic, but when I was a kid, I enjoyed. The, I have a memory. I enjoyed it. Out. I have a memory that revolves around this film, and I I watched it when I was probably nine. Yeah, I and mean, it, it's that scene where he lets where he gets rid of Airbud, where he takes it. Spoiler it's alert. So sad. Where he takes him out in the and he's like, "Get out of here!" Go. Oh, tearjerker, man. Oh my goodness! Don't, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm just like. I was so sad when it happened, and the entire movie, it just touches me in the best way, especially now that I have a dog, too. I mean, can you imagine if you're a dog owner at the time watching this movie, and you go home? You like, probably went home and, like, hugged and loved on your puppy, like, and gave him treats whenever he wanted it or she wanted it. Speaking of sequels. so and there, But that's the thing. <laughs> the sequels, I never, I didn't like any of the sequels. Exactly. But the first Air Bud, I loved it. It was great. Vanilla pudding. I've always, ever since that movie. I know. I always, I always have to eat it when I watch it. You know, it's something that's really funny. And the, and the clown, I can't remember his, his name. He was in he, Disney. He was in Toy Story. Yeah, he, he was the voice of a, was this the Slinky Dog? Yeah, and he he passed he away. Was, yeah, he passed away years ago. But yeah, but he was funny in the movie too. Mm-hmm, playing the great. clown. He was just so over the top. He was having a good time, and I loved it. You know, I loved his his evil role in the movie because he was having fun with it, and obviously. Sucks that he's not around anymore, but Joe, what's your next? What's the next honorable mention here? Um, I do not have another honorable mention. Hey, two, okay. two is a good number. I, I it's know better what mine than are. three. I know what mine are here. What, what's your honorable right. mentions? Okay, I have them. I have them written down here on my phone. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, probably Rudy. I, I'm just gonna have one honorable mention. I'm gonna it's say a good Rudy. 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 I'll be real. <laughs> That is it's a great it's a example restaurant. of a film where there's not a lot of sports story going on in terms of the team itself. Mm-hmm. But Sean Astin, he is a totally underrated oh, actor. Oh, yeah. But I think he's a lot like Paul Giamatti in that he is such a character actor. He's such a limited role. Um, he's such a specific kind of role that he can play because of, of his looks. Mm-hmm. Like Danny DeVito. Exactly. I don't think he gets the roles that he should, um, but he is – he is awesome in Rudy, and then you just we, the whole time you're watching it, you because we all know that guy. He that's all he wants to do is play sports, and he and just can't, bust his you know? butt and he busts his butt and he's not, still not that good, but he busts his butt. And, and, and even the, there are players that don't want to be there as much as he does, and he still doesn't get a play. And at the end, you're just oh. So I, do you just have that's that, my that is my one honor. I have I actually have one more. I forgot I almost forgot to mention it. I'm so happy I just remembered it right now when you talked football, um, Invincible. Oh, that's a great one. With Mark Wahlberg. Yep. And uh, Vince Papali's story. Vince Papali. As a Giants fan, <laughs> I liked it, you know? And, and his girlfriend's a Giants fan, too. Or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I can't remember the actress's name, but oh, she was in Hunger Games, too. Um, oh, gosh. Man, I feel so Elizabeth awful. Banks. Elizabeth Banks, yes. She was also one of the producers of Pitch Perfect, but she was fantastic in the movie. Mark Wahlberg, great. Obviously, he's a... He's he's built, man. He and the way he like goes through the entire movie, just abs- just another t- good story to come up on. But uh, let's go ahead and go through our top five. You want me to go ahead and start? You want start me to go first? I'll go first. Okay, he'll give. He'll All right, go. number five on my list. Um, going from football to basketball, we're going to Glory Road. Oh yeah. With uh, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it. I can't even remember. It was over the uh, the miners, I think. Miners. Is it for UTEP? UTEP. But it used to be Texas Western. Texas yep. Western. Yeah, that's what it was. First all Coming, five black guys to start. The story was fantastic. You know, in the amount of. Uh, it was a Disney movie, I believe. Yeah, See, it was Disney. I, and I they went so far on it for a Disney movie, and I feel like if it went further, it would have became it would have become too much. See, I I liked the film, but I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan. I felt like it was kind of vanilla, and it's I mean it was it was too soft. Yeah, I, I just felt like it was kind of a I don't know I I didn't dislike the film, but it 
I'm not dogging. I'm not dogging on you, Joel. I just for me, it didn't. It didn't do much. And look me in the eyes and tell it's me a, that it, it's a great story. I think. I think no, it was. I think it's very wor- worthy of getting made. And it's I good, and I oh, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed absolutely, it's a great yeah. story. It's a great I did story. feel like it did go over the top. And some of the characters in the movie, as far as the African Americans, um, their stories did get mixed up sometimes. I've, I was like, all right, which one's that one? Which one's that one? Because there were so many of them. So I was just trying to like I couldn't keep up sometimes with the characters because they jumped ship so many times on them. Well, a little, that was my only complaint about it. A little it. OU thing, you know, Kadeem Latin, Big Daddy Latin, the, the big guy from Houston with the ball who dunks all the time. That's his grandpa. Oh, that's awesome. Really? Yeah, that the guy character is his grandpa. That that's is a story. hard thing about sports film is when there's a lot of characters. I even had that with one of my top movies here. Is there's so many characters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when there's when they're all kind of that younger guy. They all start to. You're like, wait, which one? They're yeah. all kind of built the same. They're all kind of like look the same. The, the clean uniformity, cut. Yeah. because uniformity. That's the they're all wearing, and they're the all wearing the uniforms too, yeah. and they're you kind of lose their faces in it. And I'm not just talking about um, the the which we call it the the players. I was talking about. I'm talking about the supporting cast as well. Like yeah, the families so and also the friends that are with them. You know, they're interchangeable as well. You know, but that's that's just a ni- kind of a nitpick thing. But at the same time, it's very important that a movie focuses on a smaller group. That's why, like I said before, that type of movie would probably be nominated a little better or have a better chance if it was focusing on a little smaller group. But hey, go on. Number five. Okay. With my number five, I'm going to go with 42. I really liked um, I liked the storyline. I thought it was really well Tell us done. a little bit about it. I it, 42 is the story of uh, Jackie Robinson uh-huh. um, uh, when he's playing for the Dodgers, um, correct? Brooklyn Dodgers. Back when they were in yes, Brooklyn. Yeah. Back when they were in Brooklyn. And, um, they should be there still. It follows him when he's in the – see in the African-American League at the beginning of yeah, the – Yeah, he's in the, the – the, that the all-black league. It was called the Negro Leagues back then. Yes, they used to exactly, call it. exactly. Um, and um, – I love Harrison Ford as the Branch Ricky. It, heck yeah! It's I mean it is a really huh, I'm not doing a Star Wars movie. It's, again. It is a great uh, storyline, and I, there's some moments in that movie where the scene where he breaks the bat in the in the tunnel mm-hmm. I think is one of the greatest mm-hmm. scenes uh, in a sports film. I really liked it. And it, it deserved the hype it got. Um, it was one of the few films that I thought was made a sports film that was made over a big event that actually did it justice. It mm-hmm. did the, it did the Jackie Robinson story justice, I think. And Jackie Robinson is such a memorable athlete, not just amongst, um, not just amongst baseball, but everywhere else. Yeah, he's a generational opening, defining face, opening the, the doors for many um, multi race or uh, other races to get involved with sports, and it was a way to kind of bring together the idea of you know. Maybe segregation isn't the the answer. And uh, and Chad Boswick, that was his first major role, mm-hmm. and he did phenomenal in it. And recently, he's done the you know the ja- the ja- or the James Brown story, of Get On Up. Yeah, uh, he's been in a few other things, but for a guy who came out of nowhere, that was his first big role. I was very very impressed. And you know sometimes these movies you you don't have to look exactly like him. Yeah. He yeah. had the exact build as Jackie Robinson. I mean, face wise, doesn't look like him. And Jackie Robinson had a really high pitched voice. Anybody who actually seen the actual Jackie Robinson uh, uh, story from the 40s that he actually played himself. Jackie Robinson had a really high voice, but, you know, it didn't bother me. Yeah. I loved it. It was a good story. Right. That's a great fifth film. All right. Hayden. All right, my fifth film, it's a baseball film as well. I'm a little biased. That's why I had to watch what I have in here baseball-wise. But um, it is Bull Durham. Bull Durham is a 1988 Kevin Costner, Susan Sarandon, Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins, one of Tim Robbins' first roles. Is a it is a great movie. It it just to me it gives the essence of what baseball is before those guys actually make it. Mm-hmm. It's about minor leagues, about the Durham Bulls, who is an actual minor league team, and about uh, players. It typically revolves. Uh, this story revolves around an almost old, old washed up catcher named Crash Davis, a young upcoming pitcher named Nuke Lelouch, played by Tim Robbins, and then there's a lady who you know. Always get who's always been with all the baseball players that come through the town, and there's a love story has everything in it. It is a uh, it's a very good movie. Any baseball fan, any real baseball fan out there has seen the movie. They love it. The story is awesome. Um, Kevin Costner, you know, we've seen what he can do. Yeah, yeah, we've seen it's what fantastic. he does. He's but he's great in sports movies. Mm-hmm. And that, that what was his first sports movie, and that put him he set the bar high for himself. And to me, that that movie will always be one of my favorites, just because 
of the whole story and how Kevin Costner played Crash Davis. Guys, I promise I'll make this really quick, but I just thought of an honorable mention that I, I have to include. <laughs> All right, just get it out there. The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. That's all I'm going to say. Go ahead, Joel. Number I thought about that when I was Number four. It's a good one, by the way, Hayden. Um, number four on mine, uh, Remember the Titans. Remember mm-hmm. the Titans, pretty... Uh, like I said earlier, you know, uh, you do get lost in the uh, the large groups of people in the movie, like the story, but I did feel like Remember the Titans was... A, a single team it wasn't a group of people it was a single team in the movie and like Laurie Road you know it was just another um, it's interesting though that it's another movie that just brought up a the lot the team of itself was almost a character that's what yeah. I think works mm-hmm. for Remember the Titans yeah and, 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 I feel, Titans. and I feel like that works well there for you go mo- that works well for movies and not uh, sports movies and not so well either because um, it's unfortunate because you can't really pick one person that stood out in the roles, and that's kind of except I for mean, Denzel. Yeah, and except for Denzel, obviously. But head but, coach, but it's a really good movie. I thought, um, I I love that. I love that choice. But I I, I love it. I love it because it may be a little bit higher up on my All list right, too. Aiden, so you're next. Number four, I got the Blind Side. I know we've already talked about that a little bit, um, but I love. I think my favorite scene is when the coaches are coming in, and I love that. Like Nick Saban is there, and <laughs> and uh, that you know all the. Uh, Houston Nutt is there and all that. I think that's really cool. What can um, you do for me? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The little brother character. I mean, obviously some of that stuff is not real. Mm-hmm. but And I thought Tim McGraw did a good job. He did. He, he did a great – without a goatee and with hair, you know. He, <laughs> Definitely he, different It was kind of weird, but um, I liked I liked the film. I thought the cast for Michael Orr's character was really good. Spot on, yeah. Um, I know that Michael Orr – he probably didn't represent Michael Orr as well as he'd like, but in terms of storyline – it was great. And hey, Sandra Bullock. Here's the in. way I see it, though. It gave him a lot of publicity. And oh, yeah. And it got him a big helped his draft stock. Did you know she was nominated for a Razzie and an Oscar in that she same won. year? Didn't she, did she, she didn't she got, she, she won, won an Oscar. Oscar yeah. believe, yeah. She won an Oscar and she won the and Razzie. Razzie. That no one's ever done year. that. That's, that's amazing. Pretty Talk interesting. About, and that, I mean, but I it's because of uh, she did it for the other movie, All About Steve. Yes. I think uh. if you if that kind of sums up Sandra Bullock, though, as an actress. But anyway, she yeah. can be fantastic, but she can get herself in a lot of stupid movies. All right, so number four. Speaking of Tim McGraw, I have another movie. My fourth movie has Tim McGraw in it. What? What is it? Friday Night Lights. Oh, I see. There was, I, okay. there was a TV show. I've never seen the film. But the film came out in 2004, and it was based off the H.G. Bissinger book, or Buzz Bissinger's, that it actually goes by, book Friday Night Lights from 1988, mm-hmm. 89, Odessa Pyramid. Texas Panthers football team. That book, that movie resembles to me because I'm from one of the winningest football programs in the state of Oklahoma. That's where I come from, hometown wise. It, you, can, you can plug them. I mean, the, to honestly, <laughs> it they even though Odessa Pyramid is a way bigger town, Texas football, small town Oklahoma football. I mean, it's Definitely. it's even crazier in Texas, but it epitomizes what it is, and you get to feel as players. You get to see what a star recruit who blows out his knee goes through. Booby Miles. If I mean y- y'all have not y'all are sports fans y'all haven't seen this I need to watch it I haven't seen it y'all have to watch it okay <laughs> one of the one of the best movies of all time Billy Bob Thornton's a head football coach he plays Coach Gaines gives one of the best speeches in the in in my mind in cinema history and right. he improved it didn't even wasn't even scripted or anything and honestly if you if any people who've ever played football high school football especially they hits at home with them. When Booby Miles gets hurt, and in that speech he says, "I want y'all to look at Booby Miles. If you don't start getting a little teary eyed or something, there's something not right with you." Because if in my mind you're not a man if you don't get teary eyed right there. And th- we do need to say, guys, Gal- or guys out there, Gatlin was uh, and is a baseball player. Was um, formerly. formerly. Hey, I, he can still throw a pretty mean, uh, pretty mean ball a lot faster <laughs> than I can. And, and Thomas, the Thomas Bulldogs, right? Thomas Terriers. Terriers. Yeah. Terriers. So, yeah. Terriers. I mean, we do have an Dallin's athlete. Brett in the Favre too. Yeah, that's true. And on my on my off days. Yeah, on his off days, he's. All right, Favre. what do you got for three, Joel? Three. Um, I got a really interesting movie. Uh, I spoke earlier about the movie and the story behind it, and that's the wrestler, uh, Mickey Rourke. Phenomenal. Phenomenal in the movie. Like I said, it's really it's best when you focus on one character in the entire movie, and you'll see this kind of trend in my in top three. So, but when it came to Mickey Rourke and, you know, wrestling, he struggled his, you know, struggled with, you know, coming from the high fames of professional wrestling to try to live his life out outside of pro wrestling. And the story, it's important because a lot of these wrestlers perform every, like, every day. They're out there all the time 
wrestling, and it's so different because there's no off season, there's no uh, dr- draft day, there's no time where they relax really because they're performing almost every day of the week. And to see somebody like stop out of su- all of a sudden is tough, and you really see that in Mickey Rourke's performance in the movie. To see him struggle with just being outside the ring, you know, like I, he he can't be he can't be like, all right, I'll just stop wrestling. You just can't. It's it's like playing sports for your entire life and just stop stopping out of nowhere. It's like I, it's like you're st- hitting you hit a brick wall. It, it is very fitting, Joel, that you have a, a wrestling movie in your top three. I yeah. would not expect anything less. I had to have one. You, you absolutely it's a really good one. movie, though. If you haven't seen it, I it is. recommend and checking it out. Yeah, Mickey Warwick survived his career, I yeah. feel, with that movie. So He actually boxed in Russia like a couple months ago. Yeah, he did. Warwick's the real deal, man. He's, he's, he's kind of... It's, it's kind of weird. He's, he's an eccentric, movie. very eccentric person. Yeah, but he's a really, he's a real deal. He he loves his art films. That's for sure. Well, number three for me, I would have to go with Remember the Titans. Um, just a great it's film. A classic. I, I think my favorite thing about that film. I know people love the relationship between um, the two defensive players. I'm trying. Oh, their names are going right off the. Um, oh, you know what? You know the guy who. Well, yeah. I'm trying to not give spoilers here. The guy who has to think left side, to strong side. There we go, <laughs> left side and strong side. But I love the relationship between the coaches in that film. Um, I think that's a really, especially Bertier, Coach Gary Bertier, Bertier when he's on. Gary the, Bertier is the line, is the that's Caucasian. Right. That's right. And Julius, I can't remember his last Julius. name. But Julius, Julius Caesar. Gary, and Julius. Julius Caesar. Yeah. Man, see, that's why we bring Gatlin up in here. <laughs> you know, he's I, not as sports movies. My favorite scene in Remember the Titans is where. Um, the ref is calling the game uh, wrong, and, and um, the, the two guys from the, the Hall of Fame committee are up in the stands, and, and uh, the coach goes over, the white coach goes over and says, listen, you pick that up. You know, you're done calling this game like this. He says, well, you know, if you do, you're done. And he says, Just call care. him out on it. And he was about to be in the Hall of He's Fame. To, he says, you're, you're not, you're not in the Hall of Fame anymore. And he said, I don't care. That guy's a great actor, that guy. I can't remember. William he something is Yeah, his name. and he doesn't get a lot of roles, but he is really a good actor. He plays Southern characters yes. really well. But that movie, Remember the Titans, I like I I was ashamed it wasn't in my top five. Uh-huh. But it's because I got all these other football I had to throw in front of. That's fair. My third movie, um, believe it or not, is a basketball movie. Hoosiers. Oh, I thought Hoosiers, about it. Yeah. Hoosiers is a great. I saw film. you. Yeah, I saw it earlier trying to get a mix up of yeah the, songs the theme song for Hoosiers. Yeah. But Norman Dale, I mean, that's Gene Hackman plays him. He's kind of is for this is when he's starting to get his older days of his acting career, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean it tells it tells about Indiana basketball, small town Indiana. Chit, Jimmy Chitwood leads a small town of uh, I think well in actuality the town was named Butler, but uh, in this film I can't remember uh, Hickory Hickory is what their yeah. name, and if they go and place end up playing like I said, it'd be like. Hello listener, this is Joel, and unfortunately our recording stopped at this point, so we are unable to deliver you the rest of the podcast, but we would like to let you know that it was a pleasure for you to listen in, and I personally would like to appreciate you for taking the time to listen to our podcast. If you enjoyed it, obviously, do you have some links to follow up if you'd like to listen to more? We also have a live show every Wednesday, 3 to 5 Central U.S. time, in the links provided below. Also, please let us know what you thought of the show on our Facebook and Twitter page. Don't forget to rate and comment on the show. How well do you think we are? If you think we're horrible, let us know. We'd like feedback on what we can do better for you, audience. And until next time, this has been Real Talk, and I'm Joel. On behalf of Gallon and Hayden, I'd like to thank you for listening. still here? It's over. Go home. Go.